This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Did her parents only talk to her when she looked happy? That's terrible if that's the case. But in school the next day, I found everything the same. It wasn't like I had changed after all. I just... I was still just myself. Nobody in my class even tried to talk to me. That morning, I thought I might be able to get a bit of a smile on my face, but in the end, my expression was gloomier than ever. Maybe that girl I met the day before was a sign from God. A little cosmic meddling to keep me from killing myself at the wrong time. It's possible. <laughs> that That's why we don't actually learn girl's name. Girl was actually an angel. It could happen. Could have just said so from the start, then. I nearly misunderstood. Nearly thought I'd found some place where I belonged. Nearly thought it was okay for me to live. Nearly started thinking like a normal person. That was a close one. I almost forgot what my tutors taught me so thoroughly. Yeah, that had to be it. I didn't have a best friend. That was all a dream. Ugh. Dreams aren't worth it, are they? You end up feeling really tired when you wake up. After school, I stood up from my seat before anyone else and beelined for the exit. For now, I just wanted to get out of that place. But the rooftop had become frightening, so I couldn't go back there. <laughs> if she won't tell us her name, then I'll give her a name. Miyoto. <laughs> I'm gonna call her... Japanese Peppermint Patty. Because <laughs> her freckles remind me of Peppermint Patty. I wanted to run away, but I couldn't figure out where to go. All I knew was that I didn't want to be where I was. When I slid open the door and dashed out into the hallway, there was a harsh thump and everything went black for a moment. In my haste, I'd run headlong into someone. Somehow squeezing out the words, I turned to run. But before I could take another step, someone firmly seized me by the back of my uniform. I reflexively dropped my bag and shielded my head against the blow that would follow. Oh no, not Trent. He's the biggest bully in school. There's, there was a deeply ingrained habit from my childhood. When the tutors hit my head strongly, the nausea and dizziness would sometimes last for hours. If nothing else, I wanted to avoid that. But the violence I feared didn't arrive. On the contrary, my captor bent down and picked up the bag I'd thrown to the ground. Oh, it's, it's Patty! Never mind. It was the first time in a while somebody had bothered to call me that. A silly thought flashed through my head. Oh, so that's what my name sounds like. How sad is this? I have no idea what that is, but yes. In front of my eyes was the girl from my dream. I was definitely awake, but somehow I was dreaming. I couldn't get myself to speak properly, so I shook my head vigorously from left to right. No, nothing at all. And I kept right on doing it until at last the girl reached out and caught my cheeks in her hands to hold me still. She then led me by the hand, and for the first time in my life, I entered a so-called fast food restaurant. Oh, we're going to Arby's! The complicated menu and fo colorful photographs left me lightheaded, and I didn't have the first idea how to order. After stewing in confusion and panic for a long while, I tugged on her sleeve. Look, Michiru, you can't go wrong with the roast beef sandwich and curly fries. I quietly nodded my head. She just watched me for a moment and then laughed at my amusement. If someone's never been to fast food before, that usually means one of two things. They're either very poor or they're very rich. <laughs> and ironically, Michiru actually seems to be the latter. I guess that explains where she gets all the clothes. A little while later, a small tray sat on our surprisingly cramped little table, burying the hamburger and fries the girl ordered for me. Oh, they can't be at Arby's then. They don't have burgers. It felt like she was really close. Eating a meal with my face so near someone else's made me kind of nervous. I could feel my stomach churning. What was I going to do if I threw up? Yes, that she's definitely the class clown. <laughs> oh no, Mitra is learning the horrible truth that they purposefully take the best possible photos of the food that put it up, but then it actually looks terrible. Hamburger? 
If we don't get a CG of the two of them standing side by side, then what are we even doing with, with this game? I'll be disappointed. We got CGs of little Sachi and little Yuji together, so I want to see something similar to that. That's... wow! I thought our classmates were nice, but no, they're not. Every... You know what I'm learning is... <laughs> is what this game will teach you is that everyone's a dip. Everyone's just a, wa a dip wad, a wad of dip. Except for Japanese Patty. She chattered happily on, swinging a fry back and forth. I had no idea how to respond. I mean, I was surprised to know they bothered to badmouth me. But I was even more shocked she'd told them to stop. Well, why was this person being so nice to me? She's just buttering us up so she can crash our Thanksgiving Day celebration. Because they definitely celebrate Thanksgiving in Japan. <laughs> this girl is nice. This this girl girl is is too nice for this game. That means she's gonna die. They only they only let the dip wads live. Oh. I picked up the miserably flat little hamburger from its bed of wrapping paper and took a large bite. To my surprise, a strong and vibrant flavor instantly filled my mouth. It might not have looked of anything like the photo, but it actually tasted really good. That Welcome to America. The food may not look good, but it'll taste better than anything you've ever had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Apparently this fast food restaurant has an elephant as the mascot. You know, I have had food that is so unbelievably delicious I've teared up. I'm proud to say that. The hamburger was warm, the girl in front of me was kind, and I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> that sounds like the perfect summary of a, ro of a romantic comedy right there. <laughs> I would watch that movie. Not surprisingly, she looked a little astounded. But even so, she laughed. No matter what I did, she'd laugh. After that, she started coming by every day after school, inviting me along to all sorts of different places. I guess she must have found my complete cluelessness kind of entertaining. One day it was karaoke, the next an arcade, and the day after that something else entirely. I got to see a lot of new places and experienced a lot of new things. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> She laughed when I asked that question, too. More than anything else, she was a girl who laughed a lot. And the places I went with her were always glittering with vivid rainbows of light. I also don't know what first purry means. When I went back home after we said goodbye, my room looked stale and dismal by comparison. It was like falling into a broken-down monochrome world. More and more, I spent my time impatiently counting down the hours until our next outing, wishing she'd swoop down and take me out of there. I remember getting off the train with her at some station I'd never visited before, and buying matching pencil boxes in a store I'd never known existed. After anguishing over my choice for dozens of minutes, I bought her a small hairpin as a present, and got a pouch in return. We traded hair scrunchies, ate ice cream together, the days rolled by like one unbroken dream. This is nice, and it's not going to end well. Her email address and phone number were recorded in my cell phone. I was too scared to send her a message or dial her number, but for some reason just looking at those characters on the screen would bring a smile to my face. One day, the two of us were on the rooftop after school, gazing leisurely out at the setting sun. The girl spoke to me in a quiet voice as the wind blew through her hair. Oh, shoot. She was always smiling, so I was taken aback to see her looking so serious all of a sudden. And more importantly, that completely unexpected question left me thoroughly flustered. Hmm. 
そりゃそうだね飛び降りの理由なんてそれしかないもんね<笑>ミチルは本当に変な子だ Well, also, if there was a, a golden dollar at, at the bottom of that, that's another reason. Sorry, I shouldn't joke about that. You shouldn't joke about suicide, unless the suicide joke is unbelievably hilarious. <laughs> I'm, am I crossing all sorts of lines? I don't know. I'm just trying to keep it relatively lighthearted, because this is a serious game. Oh no. Oh, that's, that's sad. I didn't really understand what she was saying, so I listened very carefully. I thought, I hoped, that if I listened carefully enough, I'd be able to pick it up at least a little. That doesn't mean you should end it prematurely, though. I wanted to say it wasn't true, but I couldn't manage to speak. Mm. Platonically, right? Because I don't swing that way. With those words, she playfully pretend kissed me on the cheek. My friend, my face went red as a lobster and I made a strange little oh, ah noise. <laughs> the evening sun was just sinking below the horizon as she left, still laughing. I just stood there for a while as the darkness settled over the said yes, yeah, settled over the rooftop. That cell phone was always ringing. I didn't like it. Every time she was called off somewhere, she'd be quiet and subdued for a long time afterward. Her smiles looked forced. Uh oh. Maybe she's also with Yuji's company. Oh man, that would be such a great twist. <laughs> Dude, that, I hope that's the case. I really hope that's the case. That's what they should do. Girl is actually part of like the Ichigaya organization that Yuji is part of, and she's a secret agent too. And like, oh yes, yes! And she's like, I want to get out of this organization, but like, I can't because they'll kill me, so she was going to kill herself, but then she met Michiru, and she's like, well, maybe I could do this. And then, oh yes, maybe she, maybe she won't die. Maybe instead she'll like fake her own death for the organization, and she's actually still there, and then, you, oh, and that's, that could be how it, how Yuji connects with all this. I hope that's the case. If that's not the case, then, like, maybe it'll still be fine, but if I were the writer, that's the direction I would take it in. That would be so good. I was worried somebody might be doing cruel things to her, but I wasn't able to ask. Sometimes I notice nasty bruises on her arm and legs, even her face every once in a while. Uh-oh. Maybe she is part of the organization, or maybe she's being abused. I hope it's not the second one. She'd always just laugh it off. It's okay, I'm fine, don't worry. I think it's still good either way. I knew it wasn't. It wasn't okay at all. But I was afraid that asking her something would pop the bubble. Destroy what we had. So I kept quiet. Even then, I knew I was being a coward. She had pulled me up from the bottom of the sea. Shouldn't I return the favor? Take her hand like she did for me? The question tormented me for a very long time. If there was no way I could do what she had done. I was still a piece of trash. It was only thanks to her that I could laugh a little. It was only thanks to her that I had found a little happiness. I couldn't allow myself to misunderstand. This was a temporary world, a dream I'd wake up from eventually. Lingering alone on the roof, I gripped the cold metal handrail tightly. I still didn't have the courage to make the short journey to the other side of that fence. That's, that's a good thing. For a few days after answering that phone call, my friend didn't attend school. Uh-oh. I was afraid something bad might have happened to her. Just like when I was a child, I knelt by the windowsill and whispered countless prayers. At school, I would hesitate in my classroom at the end of the day, thinking she might appear in the doorway like she always, like always to drag me off to play. But I was a ghost in that class. I didn't dare make myself conspicuous. 
I reluctantly trudged up to the roof and waited for her. But no matter how patiently I waited, she never came. There was nothing but the steady passage of time. I did nothing to draw breath in a monochrome world. One day, somebody called my cell phone from a withheld number. I was scared to pick it up. But thinking it just might be her, I gathered all the courage I could muster and pressed the answer button. This is sounding like me when I get unknown phone calls. On the other side of the line, I heard someone breathing harshly as if in pain. Maybe it was nothing more than a prank phone call from a stranger. But in my mind's eye, I saw her on the other end. The person I cared about more than anything else in the world. And I remembered her words on the roof that day. I mean, when you get right down to it, we're all alone, right? It's not like anybody really cares about me from the bottom of their heart. Everybody disappears in the end. Don't want to be hated, so I'll hate first. Before they can leave me, I want to disappear, or whatever. Oh, there is an E that... <laughs> Why does the E break off there? Why didn't the whole world... I don't know. Back then, I wasn't able to give a proper response to her. I'd left so many things unsaid. I decided to convey those feelings to whoever this might be. Um, this is the pizza delivery boy. I, j I just wanted to know where to deliver this pepperoni supreme. そして this is your captain. You've won a cruise. Are we ever going to learn girl's name? The person on the other end of the line hung up without a single word. It felt as though I'd been abandoned. Left behind, I squeezed my cell phone tightly in my hand. Even now, I don't know who called me that day. Pizza delivery boy! The next time I saw my friend was more than two weeks later. By that point, even sitting through class had become unbearably agonizing. I would spend the entire day on the roof waiting for her. And one day, completely out of the blue, she appeared before me once again. What happened to you?! Oh dear. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. What happened? I couldn't say a word. There wasn't a trace remaining of the girl who had always laughed so happily. Her school uniform was tattered and torn. Her hair looked like it had been hacked at with a knife. What is she doing? I don't... It's like a... Part of me doesn't want to know, but part of me also does. Her face, too, was full of bruises. Numerous wounds, as cruel as anything the tutors had inflicted on me, were openly visible in even the most conspicuous of places. Something terrible must have happened. Something so terrible I don't even want to imagine it. And it must have lasted a horribly long time. Just like that, there were tears in my eyes. God didn't protect her. I couldn't protect her. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. I hadn't asked a question, but she answered it anyway. Those clipped, vague words weren't enough for me to understand what had really happened to her. But I knew she was lying. I knew many sad, horrible things must have happened. Things she couldn't possibly have wanted to happen. I slowly approached her, then wrapped my arms around her trembling body. It surprised even me. I hadn't expected myself to do such a thing. If... I don't know whether it's her boyfriend, 
or her dad, or a family member, or whoever's doing this to her, but we gotta get her away from that, but I don't think we will. I have not heard the rumors. No! I really do hope it's just she's part of Yuji's organization. It's still a bad thing to be in, but that would at least make the story interesting and less cruel. In the classroom, my friend had become the subject of rumors. My classmate said she'd gotten to know a man decades older than her over the internet. A man with a wife and children. They said he treated her like his mistress. Oh no. Oh no. Shh. They said something about the photos of her and that man getting scattered around the internet. They said he'd done terrible things to her. Oh. Frappuccino. But none of that mattered to me. No matter what happened, it didn't change the fact that she was my best friend. <laughs> this is sad how they're both... They're really engaging in this competition of who has the lower self-worth, and it's, it's hard to watch. I would just say get the f get away from that guy. We need to get you help. でもね、誰も相手にしてくれないから、あなたと友達になったわけじゃないからね。あなたのことがいいなって思ったから、友達になったんだからね。それだけは本当。I wanted to say, of course I know that, but my voice failed me. It felt as though a chunk of cardboard had wedged itself in my throat. I couldn't force out even a tiny squeak. I wanted to tell her that she wasn't filthy, but I couldn't say a word. All I could do was hug her tightly. You gotta get the hell away from that guy. I don't care if you think you love him. You don't. And even if you do, that's not an acceptable way to treat you. She gave me another pretend kiss on my cheek. I closed my eyes and returned the gesture. Watching me, she smiled just a little. Scraps of her uniform danced in the wind like feathers fallen from the wing of a bird. She put her hands on the fence and swung herself gracefully over to the other side. No! Stop her! Straddling the border between roof and sky, standing on the line that divided this world from the next, she spoke to me. A single thought ran through my dazed brain. It's just like the first time we met. Don't do it! Don't jump! I wanted to say, I'll come with you. Don't do that either! You're not the only one, you know. I'm not interested in a world without you in it. So if you're going, I'll come alone. Just don't leave me behind. Don't leave me here all alone. I wanted to tell her. You joked that you loved me once, but I really do love you. That's the reason I'm still alive today. I wanted her to know, but I couldn't speak or move. My body felt like it was encased in concrete. I couldn't lift a single finger.
Well, shit. I wanted to say the words. We're best friends, aren't we? Let's die together. No! But instead I just watched her in silence like a complete idiot. See? I was right. I'm the stupid one after all. Bleh! Well, wasn't expecting that. I didn't know what to do. I just cowered. And then I tried to scramble over the rail to see her, to see the end. But I couldn't do it. No matter what, I couldn't get myself over that fence. I could feel my feet giving way underneath me. I couldn't even keep myself upright. Why hadn't I died with her? I was right from the start. There was never a place for me here. Screwed up big this time, didn't I? Shouldn't have let myself think I could become a normal person. Shouldn't have thought I could find something like happiness. In the end, it vanishes. The bubble pops. In that case, it would have been better never to have gotten my hopes up in the first place. Just like my parents stopped expecting anything of me. I should have stopped expecting anything from the world. I heard the wail of a siren and a chorus of horrified screams from far away. And then I fainted. My body still twined awkwardly around that fence. Just before I lost consciousness, I heard a sound like the click of a television set falling silent. I don't know if it was a hallucination or not, but I heard it clearly. When I woke up, I was lying in a hospital bed. It seemed I had been unconscious for quite a long time. Normally, there should have been police waiting at my bed to question me, but Dad took care of all that. Probably less out of concern for me than out of his desire to keep this troublesome situation from dragging on. I thought they'd discharge me soon enough, but I discovered that my chronic chest pain had grown dramatically more intense. My body was no longer physically capable of enduring a normal life. The doctor said the shock of losing a close friend may well have advanced the progression of the disease, but I didn't really know if that was true. Either way, the pain in my heart was now so agonizing that it could at times render me unconscious. My parents had more or less abandoned me, but I guess this miserable new development managed to move them to pity. They decided to send me to America for a heart transplant operation. She's going to America. Well, you know, if you had told me that in the Michiru route, Michiru goes to America, I would have gotten excited. I didn't think it would be happening like this, though. Personally, I wouldn't have minded just dying. But it seemed like those two wanted to feel like caring parents, so I decided I might as well go along with it. This is tough, because we're getting it from Michiru's perspective, which and she's definitely biased, so I don't know if her parents are actually really good parents parents, but it's just from, like, a biased point of view from Michiru, and she doesn't and she doesn't want to acknowledge that. Or if they actually are just kind of careless parents who don't... who care much more about their reputations than about their kids, which is, uh... terrible. You should not care about your reputation more than your kid. Fiends moved along behind my back. Large amounts of money traded hands, although I don't know the details. They didn't tell me much of anything about the donor, and I wasn't particularly interested either. All they said was I'd be receiving the heart of a brain-dead girl of the same age as me. Oh, that's sad. I'm glad... Hmm, that poor girl. I'm sure it must have been a really big, complicated operation. But since that day on the rooftop, I'd been living in, like, an empty husk. Can't really say it felt like much of an ordeal. They carried me off in an airplane to a place where I couldn't understand a word anyone was saying. Oh, that that's gotta be rough. Oh man, the doctor put me under anesthesia and I fell asleep. Before I knew it, I was right back in Japan. It really did seem to happen in the blink of an eye. I didn't have time to feel much of anything. Well, that's good. You don't want to feel anything during a heart transplant. I have, I still have no idea how heart transplants are even possible. I feel like as soon as you cut out your own heart, you would die, right? Like, I... You know what? It is absolutely astonishing the technology we have in terms of medicine and, like, helping people. It's absolutely mind-blowing. <sighs> My procedure apparently went about as smoothly as possible. They pumped me full of immunosuppressants to prevent my body from rejecting the new heart, but I quickly... Re I, rec quick <laughs> I recovered quickly without any side effects. 
It didn't even feel particularly strange having another person's organ inside my body. Sometimes I almost doubted whether they'd really operated on me. Of course, just touching the scar on my chest was enough to convince myself that it had to be true. But really, what difference did it make either way? Oh, wait. I was just thinking, I'm like, wait a second, if she has a scar on her chest from her operation, which you definitely would if you have a, a heart transplant, wouldn't we have seen it when we were at the beach with her? But no, she she's the only girl who actually wore a one-piece bathing suit. I wonder if that's intentional on her part, if she's like, I don't want anyone to see the scar. Probably is. I don't know. That was off topic, but I, it just occurred to me. The lump of flesh inside me constantly thumping away was different from the one that had been in there yesterday. That was all. Nobody was going to care. Nothing important had changed. My doctor celebrated my remarkable recovery from the surgery as a miracle. So enthusiastic, you might have thought my good fortune was his own. My parents had relieved expressions on their faces as well. Expressions that seemed to read, now we don't, won't have to worry ourselves about this girl anymore. That's harsh. I really hope their parents aren't actually thinking about that. Their parents. Her parents. 